Okay, well, uh, as you probably know, I'm Tony Gordon, um, the uh, PI of the project. Um, Steve Barbado, um, who is the uh, retired president, uh, sorry, uh, executive director of ITEA, is also a co-PI. And Steve was the person who helped cook up um, Excite with me a few years back. Um, Mike Hacker um, is a colleague of mine who I've worked with since 1987 on a variety of different projects. Mike is also a co-PI on uh, this project. So uh, you've got some of, some of our leadership uh, there. Um, Matt and Marnie are part of our lead teacher team. Um, they were lead teachers in Excite 1 and Excite 2. They're both very experienced um, teachers, uh, computer science uh, teachers. Uh, Marnie isn't a tech ed teacher, Matt is, uh, but Marnie has had many years of working with us um, and with the Hummingbirds. So we've almost made her an honorary uh, tech ed teacher. So, <laughs> But Marnie also um, is directs the professional development for uh, BJC and is based at NC State in uh, Raleigh. So she has a number of other hats that she wears besides being um, uh, a lead teacher with us. The, um, the way today's going to work is that there are three distinct segments. So part one, two, three. And uh, what um, I'm hoping will happen is as we complete seg segment one, uh, which is the very basic introduction to um, SNAP, we'll take a 10 minute stretch break so that you can go and grab a cup of tea or you know just have a walk or whatever, just stretch your legs. And then we'll restart um, after 10 minutes and we'll carry on uh, and see how we get on. We are scheduled from nine through to 12. Um, I actually blocked out nine through one, but I'm hoping that we will be finished uh, by 12. But uh, we'll see how, uh, how the day goes. Marnie plans to set assignments for you, as you'll see in a minute once Marnie um, kicks off. And uh, in those assignments, we're going to use breakout rooms to allow you to be able to uh, meet with um, colleagues. And so you'll actually be able to um, chat through and ask questions of other teachers who are working on the Excite project as we, uh, as we move through the uh, program for today. It is being recorded and uh, the segments, each segment will be eventually uploaded to our um, YouTube channel uh, Excite has its own, Excite Project has its own YouTube channel. We'll upload um, the segments to the YouTube channel and we can then share that information with other teachers who either couldn't make today's meeting. Uh, we have apologies from two teachers saying they, they weren't able to join us, but could we send them the link? So that, uh, that recording will be useful for those who want to um, learn a little um, as they begin to join the project. Um, I think that covers all of the housekeeping items, Marnie. Um, I think we're probably ready to go. So I think over to you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is I kind of wanna just hear everybody's voice and I want um, us to be able to say um, hello to each other. And so to do that, we'll do a quick introduction, your name, your state, and um, I don't know, the school you teach at. So I'm Marnie Hill, I'm from um, Raleigh, North Carolina, and I teach through North Carolina School of Sciences and Math, um, and I work at NC State. So I'm gonna popcorn over to Heather. Um, hi, my name's Heather Miller. I'm in Chambly, which is Atlanta, Georgia, and I teach computer science and engineering. Um, oh, do I need a popcorn to somebody? Or are you going to handle it? I'll just handle it. I'll just, I'll just okay. Trey, go ahead. Uh, excuse me. I'm Trey Moore uh, in Wilmington, North Carolina. I'm a technology education and tech CAD teacher. 27 years. Awesome. You're right there with my husband. He's right at that 27. That's sweet spot. Um, Lawanda? Hi, I'm Lawanda Sanford. I teach at Arabia Mountain High School in uh, Georgia, right outside of Atlanta. And I teach AP CSP, CSA, and uh, Intro to Software Technology. Awesome. Matt? 
Good morning. Um, I'm Matt Davis, and I'm in Maryland, um, a bit north of Baltimore, and have been um, a business ed tech ed teacher for 30 years and just started as a career coach. So a little change of pace, but still keeping my toes in the in the CS world. Um, Michael, I'm going to go ahead, since you're, you're right there, let's go ahead and, and get you introduced as well. Good morning, everyone. Um, Your sound is very low. Is this better? It's better. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Michael Hacker. I um, am the co-director of the Hofstra University Center for STEM Research. Uh, my background is technology education. I taught secondary school for 20 years and then worked at the State Education Department in New York and have been working at Hofstra on NSF funded projects since 1997. So if you add it all up, it's uh, it's 60 years. So it's a long time to teach an old dog new tricks, but I'm interested in um, trying to wrap my mind around all of the intricacies of computer science and programming. I think it's a wonderful thing for our field. Awesome. Steve? You, I can't hear you at all. Mm -hmm. You're on. That's because I was muted. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Um, I uh, taught 10 years at the middle school and high school level in Pennsylvania and then became a state supervisor for tech ed in the state of Delaware for five and then went to a school district in Pennsylvania as a supervisor of science and technology education for 13 years, retired from the Pennsylvania system, and then became executive director and CEO, like Tony described earlier, for ITEEA and retired two years ago. So in my role here with ITEEA, I'm working as a senior fellow to help them with projects like this and to promote the field. And we're excited about the ability for technology and engineering teachers to offer this new AP Computer Science Principles by Design course. Awesome. Good luck. Yep. Thank you. Tracy? Good morning. Um, I'm Tracy Paterno. Um, I fr I'm from New Jersey. I'm teaching at Vineland High School in New Jersey. Um, I'm a math teacher. Um, I um, had a, uh, I can't remember what they used to call it when I was in college, but I did a lot of programming um, back when I got my degree, which was, 30 something years ago. And I taught a computer programming course about 20 years ago. Um, but it's been a while since I've done any programming. Um, I'm really excited to do this. Um, I got my feet wet a couple of months ago and I did an online snap course. So I, I'm, I, I think I'm in on good standing, but I just want to make sure. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Wonderful. Welcome. Um, I think it's, is it um, Camellia? Yes, um, excuse me, it's Camellia. Thank you. I, I'm from Fayetteville, North Carolina. I teach at Grace Creek High School. Um, I teach business education classes. This will be my very first computer science course that I'll be teaching um, in the upcoming semester or year, school year. So I'm a very, very, very newbie to all of this. I am very close to you. <laughs> so when you, when you, oh when yeah, you, you are. <laughs> yeah, when you have a problem, just let me know. Um, I will. And then Stacey. Good morning. I'm Stacy Williams. I'm in Georgia. I teach at Tucker High School. I am an engineering and computer science teacher. Awesome. Okay, and uh, Tony's uh, introduced himself already, so we are good to go. Unless you want to go again, Tony, because you didn't talk about your teaching experience or anything. Tony's taught before as well, so we've all been in the classroom, which I find exciting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and reshare the uh, link that I put in for our slides today. You will need these slides. Okay, 
Um, these are basically going to be our instructions. And what we're going to do is we will get started. Um, I'll go through a little bit with you and then we're going to go into breakout rooms. So um, to work together um, and do some pair programming. It's a little more difficult online, uh, but we will talk about how we are going to share those pieces back and forth or how you may want to work with your partner. Um, College Board highly recommends that you have that collaborative environment for your students. And so we work on that with this curriculum. Let me go ahead and share my screen. <clears throat> so the link I gave you should uh, send you to uh, this particular um, slideshow. And we are on section one. And so Again, welcome. We're gonna talk a little bit about computational thinking. It sounds like some of you have um, some background and some of you do not, and that's uh, great. I'm, I'm excited that you're here, no matter what uh, level you are. Um, the main things about uh, computational thinking um, are, is that pattern recognition, algorithms, decomposition, and abstraction. So uh, we have works in, um, several different grants, and this is one of the ones that um, we worked with. Um, some, of the, some of the materials are from that, and it's our uh, Infusing Computing grant. And so we worked with teachers who had no experience at all in coding, and we talked about how to integrate that into the classroom. Well, we're gonna do a lot of coding, um, and we want you to be uh, prepared for that especially for the things that will be important for the AP exam. Uh, we do have a video here. This is about pair programming. Mainly what um, <clears throat> the videos are for, if you would like to go look at it, you can. I'm not gonna play it now, but the main thing you wanna do is uh, when you're working with another person, you wanna be respectful. You wanna talk about your work. Uh, you want to kind of get into explaining what you do. Um, and you're gonna have your driver and your navigator. So the driver is gonna be the person who will be doing this stuff. Um, and so they'll be the one doing the code. The navigator is gonna be the person who's basically reading the map, right? So the person that has the, the instructions. Um, and uh, students don't tend to love to do this part until they get into it. And then they find out that it's not bad to have a partner when you're programming. So we try to do this and there are pieces when you'll find in the curriculum as we get into it, that those will be places that are gonna be addressed in the curriculum itself. But today we are just learning how to code and we will do that together uh, in groups. So what are our goals? We're gonna learn a little bit about pair programming. We're gonna get comfortable with SNAP. That's what we want to do. Uh, we want to talk about it. We want to get your, uh, give you that little bit of experience so that when you come into the PD, that's not the, you're not worried about um, never seen and seen something before. And um, so that you can get into the parts that we need to get into to help you with the AP exam. Um, and then we have our um, beginning activity that's going to get us into SNAP, get us all loaded up. Um, and then we're going to have a second activity. Okay. And these are very basic, um, but, and you you would be welcome to use slides like this as you're just starting your class out. I know that classes like your, your students don't always get placed in your class on the first or second day. So if you wanted to do something kind of slow, similar to this and, and slowly guide your students into it until you have your full class, um, this is a great way to do that. All right, so we're gonna draw a square and refresh any knowledge that you might have um, with SNAP and we're gonna work on making shapes. That's the first thing we're gonna do. The next thing we're gonna do is introducing yourself. Uh, yourself. You're going to make some algorithms and you're going to uh, set some events together and they're gonna tell a story in SNAP. So those are the things that we're gonna work on in this first section before we come to a break. Okay, so during the activities, you are gonna be switching back and forth. Again, this is gonna be something that you can work out with your uh, partner, however you wanna do it. Um, 
I know that there's sometimes a struggle to do uh, strict pair programming when you're doing a professional development because you want to do the thing as well as um, understand it as a teacher. So um, don't worry about the teacher part right now. Uh, we don't have to worry about that right now. We're just learning and we're just getting some experience with the programming language that we're going to be working with. Okay. So uh, we do have the, this, this one was kind of set up for uh, in-person, uh, one person having, well, not, not completely. Um, we won't worry about that. But if you're, you have your students together, it's easier for them to drive and navigate together. It's not as easy if you're doing it virtual. I do teach virtually, so um, this has been a little bit of struggle for me. I haven't figured out the best solution yet, but it will happen. All right, so we are going to draw a square. We get our little squares going, and um, <clears throat> we have some other shapes in here. Um, but that's what we're going to do. So this is kind of a demo. First thing we want to do is basically draw that square. So this this square right here, that's that's the goal. That's the goal. If you get it and you're playing and you have the other shapes that you develop, that's absolutely fine. But right here, that's that's the big goal. Okay? All right. So, what I'm going to want you to do and I'm gonna do this with you all. I want you to go ahead and uh, click on the bjc.techlit. Okay, and when you get here, you'll click on this run snap now. And the snap platform should open for you. Um, I will say sometimes the Snap platform and Zoom and the videos might cause your um, computer to be a little slower. So if you have to come off screen or off your video, totally understand, okay? All right. So we have that. We're going to go ahead and do a sign up. And I will, before we do the sign up, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the language. When I say scripting area, this big section right here is going to be your scripting area. This right here, this big space right here that's white is your um, your stage where your program runs. Um, this down here is your sprite corral. That's where uh, you can click on your stage to code your stage or you can click on your sprite to code your sprite. Okay, and our palette is uh, our palettes are over here on this side. So just going to start with some of those basics. Don't worry if you don't remember what they are. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, it wants us to go ahead and um, sign up. If you had not signed up for SNAP yet, the way to do that would be to come to the cloud and go ahead and um, log in or get into the, um, the SNAP. And you'll do your login or sign up, I'm sorry. If you have not signed up before, you'll do your sign up. And um, for birthday, they're just gonna want your month and your year. And when you add the email address, um, you will have to validate that email address within three days. So I'll give everybody a moment to get this filled out. If worse comes to worse and you can't do this right now, you would be able to save yourself to sell, save your stuff to your browser. Um, but it doesn't save it forever. Then I'll talk about different ways of saving in just a second. Okay, so once you've filled that out and you've, you've clicked OK, um, then you'll want to go ahead and log into the account. So you'll click your cloud, uh, cloud again. You'll click log in. And I'll go ahead and log in. Okay. 
All right. So um, you'll notice when I log in, my cloud turns um, opaque. So now I have a little uh, cloud here that is all filled in. And that is kind of where I want you to be. Is everybody good? Can everybody give me either a thumbs up or a reaction somehow, some way? Shout out if you need me to stop. Okay, I've got, I've got that. So we'll go to the next slide here. And I wanted to talk about this because we are on virtual um, and it is not necessarily um, as easy to, um, to download, upload, all kinds of things. We're, what we're gonna do is we're going to, I'm gonna tell you how the best way to share your programs back and forth with what we're gonna be doing here. There are multiple ways to share programs, um, but what we're gonna want to do right now, we're not worried about uh, whether students have finished something or we want we have a hard deadline or anything. Uh, we just wanna be able to share it back and forth with each other. Uh, so what I've got, <clears throat> is to share your project. And you can come back to this slide. This is slide number 11, so just keep that in your head if you forget about uh, sharing the project. When we're working together, we're gonna wanna share our code back and forth. Um, and since we're on Zoom, it, the download and uploading can happen, but you will have to have something to be able to send to your partner. And it doesn't work well with the, um, with the chat tried it. Um, so we're going to make sure that you can have a link to be able to share back and forth, which will make it easier. So when we go in and we are going to do a share, I'm going to um, do this for you. Okay, so I have created some code and I want to share that with you. To share that with you easily online, I'm gonna come here and I'm going to, um, first I've got to save it. So I'm gonna do my EX, um, EX, I don't know, um, share, example share code, right? So this is my example share code. I have to save it first. When it saves it, it's not going to automatically share it out. You can see that my URL up here is very short. It's still the HTML URL. So I need to go in and I want to um, do a save as again, and I will go down to my EX share code. So you have to go to the link of where it's at. You see, I already practiced it. <laughs> I already practiced it. Um, so here we have example share code and I click share. Um, then it's gonna ask me, do I want to? Yes, I do. And now it's shared. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close that out. I can just cancel that. If you notice here, um, my URL is much longer. I'm gonna put this URL into the chat for you and you'll be able to open up my code. You'll notice it has my username and it has uh, the, um, the name of the project name, which is EX share and, and code. Um, and you can click on that and it will automatically open up. It will automatically open up and then, in fact, let me go ahead and click on it. And it's opened up my code. Now it's gonna look like this when it opens up my code. If you click the double arrows at the top, it'll bring you into the um, coding piece, okay? Now you cannot change my code. Well, you can change my code and then you can save it, but it will not change for me when you go in to change my code. So now you can share, this is one way that you can share your code back and forth. And that's kind of how we're, we can work with it today. Um, there will be more ways that we will talk about sharing your code in the future. All right, so I'm gonna leave this one because I have two of them and I don't want two of them. Um, any questions about that? That's on slide number 11. Also, you can ask. All right. 
me get back here and we will go ahead and get started. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to break uh, people up into breakout rooms. And I want to see how many people we got here. The other question is, does everybody want to participate? Um, everyone, everyone want to participate as teachers? Because then I could just do the breakout rooms and then you all can go in together into a room and you can work together. Marnie, please excuse me. Um, I'm in D.C. for a wedding, oh. so I'm listening. Okay, that's fine. That's okay. absolutely fine. Also, we will be recording this. If you are uh, in D.C. for the wedding, uh, you can come back and watch the recording. Okay, thank you. All right, so what I will do is I will go ahead and set up the breakout rooms. Uh, we have one, two, three, four. All right, so Luana's gonna stay in the room with me and then we will get everybody else into breakout rooms. If you don't want to go into a breakout room, um, let me know and we can, I don't know, Tony, what do you think? Should we do the breakout rooms and try them out or should we uh, go ahead and just, um, cause we have a smaller group. Um, so I didn't know, do you want to just go ahead and walk through the slides as a group? What does, uh, Depep, what do, what do the, um, our, our uh, Excite teachers think? Did you want to carry on as we are for now? And um, as it gets more complex, perhaps use breakout rooms later? Um, I think that might be okay. Yeah. Let's go ahead. Yes that because I think um, that might be okay. And um, once there's more code to really talk about um, and get into, we can we can do that. Okay, cool. I've got some thumbs up happening. I got yeses, I've got nodding. So let's go ahead. I'm going to be your navigator. How about that? I will be teacher B. I'm the navigator. Uh, and so I'm going to be telling you what you need to do. So you will need to have your snap um, open. Um, <clears throat> so make sure you have your snap open, make sure you have your, you're kind of logged in. If you don't get logged in or you get got logged out, we'll log back in again. So what we're going to do, and I want you to do this in your snap and I will not be doing this. So, um, this is, this is your, you're going to be, you're going to be doing this. And if you have a question, stop me and we can talk about it. So I want you to select the motion category, and that is, I want you to click on that, and it should make all of the blocks for motion open up. Um, Miss Hill, I have a question. Um, uh, is there a way to toggle this off, or is it just blocks? Can you see under the hood? Yeah. Um, so you wanted to have something more like a, a text-based stuff? I, I like to show them so they stop being scared pretty quickly. That they just did this whole thing in block and then I flip it over. I don't let them change it um, in the code yet. So, I want them to see it. Um, so, um, what I'm going to yeah. do, what I can do for you, <clears throat> get uh, the information on how to do that. Okay, but um, I will I will get that from um, Dan or Jens. There is a way to look at it. I uh, I'm just looking at this platform and I'm like, there's got to be a way. So yeah, um, lots of choices. Yeah. Um, hang on, I've got to get text. Oh, it's not urgent. <laughs> yes. I know. I'm just, I just needed to make a note of it. If I don't make a note of it. Oh, okay. Okay. Get... Got it. Sorry. No, it's not a problem. It's not a problem <laughs> at all. all right, I'd like so... to have that information as well. So if maybe you could send it out in an email, I think it's a great idea for students to see that they're writing script code, even though they're doing it in block. Mm -hmm. The other yeah, thing they... about this language is that it's actually mm -hmm. super complex. You can do recursion with it. You can do some really, um, um, 
pretty big stuff with your higher order functions and things like that. It does things that a lot of students will say, oh, this is just scratch. And I'm like, this is not. And I've had- It's not scratch. It is not scratch. <laughs> and I have had students who have been take, had taken APCSA with Java and they've come into this and they're like, this is, this is what is this? And I said, hmm, go build me a clock in Java and go build me a clock in scratch, uh, Snap and tell me which one you want to code in. I have a question. Um, so Heather, it, are you asking that because you've got students who are already familiar with like a script-based pro programming language and that would make them more comfortable? Um, well, so my first year, we never left the blocks until way into it. And they just sort of didn't believe that they were doing, they felt the feedback that the kids were giving me was that this feels, you know, it's complex, but it feels elementary. And it's like, no, 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 no. There, there's a lot going on under the hood. And so I started showing them this so the following year. I started showing them, you know, they would do it all in block. And then I would show them under the hood. And some of the kids would figure out how to do that anyhow, toggle, you know. Mm -hmm. And then invariably, they toggle they edit in the text space and then they try to go back and of course they they break the block essentially and it wouldn't work and then i gotta you know i would go into so i found that if i just tell them hey this is under the hood you know you can look at it at any time but you know you don't open the hood of your car and just start pulling wires you know when you're when you're needing to drive that car so you know you need to learn like a little bit more about it than to just you know type of thing and so i show them and then they transitioned that group that second year transitioned better my CSA class where it's all text based. Okay. Um, they weren't scared of it because they were like, this is kind of like block, um, only a little different, you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, I've got to have my syntax, right? The block doesn't handle my syntax. Um, so anyway, I found that it works better. They're less intimidated that second year to take that class, the, the all text based Java class. Thank so you. I just like to show it, you know, it exists. Don't go in there and, and muddle unless you've saved your program somewhere else. <laughs> and it it does exist. And so they will get into some things that they can they can look at. Um, I will get that information for you. Um, not sure about the hummingbird blocks, if we can see behind that, but <clears throat> we can we can see behind the um the uh that. All right, so make sure you've got your motion. You've got your motion up. You're going to pull over, click and drag over your um, move 10 steps, and then you want to go ahead and drag in your turn 15 degrees. And if if we opened up your program, that should already be there, right? I'm not pulling that over again. You can, uh, you can do a whole new program or if you opened up mine, that's fine. Okay. It's there. Okay. So now let's go ahead and go on to the next uh, block. So now we're gonna do a step two. We're gonna uh, move and then we're gonna turn. Uh, we, we've already pulled those blocks in, but um, <clears throat> we wanna change some of the steps because if you're just moving 10 steps, it's really super small. You can click on the blocks and it will run the code and you can see how small those steps are. Um, so let's go ahead and add uh, like 50 or 100 into that block. It says 50 here. So let's go ahead and put um, for your move 10 steps. Let's go ahead and put move 50 steps. And for your turn 15, let's go ahead and do the turn 90. And if your blocks are not clicked together, go ahead and snap them together. Right. Now we want to go ahead and do the save, um, the draw square and save. So you're going to click on your file icon now. If you are working from mine, that's fine. You're going to save this project as your project, right? So you're going to click the uh, file icon, which is at the top of your screen by your cloud. And you're going to click save as. And go ahead and type in draw square and click the save button. 
<clears throat> now, this does not mean you can automatically share it. It's just the saving portion of it. If you wanted it to be shareable, you would have to go back in and click the um, Save As and click the Share button after you have highlighted your uh, Draw Square. You'll notice that there's a cloud and a browser. Uh, the browser is something you can save to the browser. Uh, there are other ways to save as well. We'll get into that. Uh, I think we have some exporting here that we can do where it exports the HTML. Okay. <clears throat> we don't have these all throughout the um, BJC or the Excite curriculum, uh, but this, <laughs> this is one of the big things your students will forget to do is save their code just like they'll forget to save their uh, documents and stuff like that. So if you don't save your stuff, you will lose it. All right, <clears throat> now we're going to, uh, we wanna go through and we wanna draw something. And this one talks about the ping command. So we are going to go down to the, um, the ping command. This one is in green um, and has the label pin. And you're going to drag the pin block over the, uh, I'm sorry, the pin down block over. And you want to put that above the move block. And then you want the pin up and you want to put that below the turn block. Why would we do that? Why would we put a pin down and a pin up? So it'll draw a line. Mm -hmm. So we can draw the line. And the reason for putting the pin up at the end is because what if we don't want to continue that line drawing? The, the computer will automatically continue drawing that line if you don't bring the pin up. So let's check your answer. Um, you can click on the code, see if it runs. <clears throat> did something, did so, something run on your screen? So check it out. There we go. <laughs> uh, you can just, I think, click save. I don't think you have to. Let me just check. Let's see, go and just click the save. That will save it once your code is already named and is yours. When you click, uh, just click the save button, it will automatically save it for you. <clears throat> okay, I'm Teach Jerry now. I'm still navigating. <laughs> All right. So, um, when you're working with your students, if you like to use the pair programming and want to uh, have them switch often, I usually switch, um, um, have them switch either when they're doing um, like a page in a lab or uh, maybe they're going to do lab one and then they switch to lab two and then I um, actually rotate them. Uh, so not everyone is having to, they're not having to have the same partner all the time. That's just how I work in my class. So what if you didn't see anything move on the... Ooh, okay. Pin so, down, move 50 steps, turn 90 degrees, pin up. Did you, you might have you lost click your Click on sprite. the flag. Did you lose your sprite? Uh, Let's No. See. Okay. Oh, one click. Duh. Oh, you don't have to have that. You can just click on the, the code itself. Oh, okay. okay. I see it. All right. So All right. thank you. Yep. Yeah. And so at live, what did we have? We had uh let me just pop this in here. Nope. Pin oh, down first, right pin up here. So really the first part is just Oh, I needed to do 90 degrees. And what was this? It was 50 or something? 50. Yeah. So you have to, we're not to the point where we're having it draw the square yet. We'll get there. All right. There we go. All right. Save that code. <clears throat> All right. 
So now we're going to talk about the algorithms and everything like that. And um, we'll want to reset our stage. Uh, our sprite might get lost. Uh, so we want to be able to have our sprite come back to the spot that we want it to. So every time we use the uh, code, we still want that sprite to come back. Uh, we don't want it to be off somewhere off screen and it will go off screen and you won't find it. And so how do you get it back? So one of the ways to get it back and to set your stage, because when you have your game and you, you're setting up your game, you want it to start at a certain spot. So let's go ahead and get these, um, pull these blocks out. Uh, blue are in your motion and the green is in your pin. Okay. So you're going to get the go to X, Y. Um, we're just going to leave it at zero, zero. That will take our sprite to the middle of the screen. Um, so that's where snaps zero, zero is. It's right in the middle of the screen. We want it, the sprite to point in a certain direction because if we don't have it pointing in a certain direction, it's going to draw it differently each time or could draw it differently each time. And then you want to have the clear to uh, clear everything that's already on the stage. So you want to wipe your stage clean. So that's like, you know, shaking your little um, Etch-a-Sketch or whatever. I think we're all old enough to remember Etch-a-Sketch. <clears throat> okay. You click all those together. And it should look like this. Again, we haven't used our hat blocks yet, but the hat block that I would use for this one would be the um, the green flag. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So now we have an algorithm. Or we have two algorithms, right? We have the go to uh, x, uh, zero, y, zero, point in direction 90 degrees, which is going to uh, have our sprite pointing to the right, and then clear, which will clear everything off the stage. So we could, <clears throat> this is just resetting, and we've created that algorithm. A lot of times when you have students that are coming in, uh, some of the words are kind of scary to them, algorithm, uh, abstraction. They're like, what does this mean? I don't know what this means. They're super simple. This is like a list of instructions that completes a task. And our what we've created here is resetting our, our stage. Save your code. <clears throat> Now, for those of you who want to move on, you can kind of move on. You have the slides, um, but <clears throat> with the uh, pair programming, I'm, I'm doing the navigate for you here. Um, so you can stay with me while we're pair programming too. It's up to you. That's how I work also in my class. My students that want to move forward, they're allowed to move forward. They can do that freely. Whereas some of the students who need a little more assistance because they don't have the experience they, they can walk through stuff with you or with each other. Okay, so now you've got the, it says click on draw something, the draw something script four times. <clears throat> so we do the pin down script four times and you'll see you have a square and then you click your, um, your reset script. Go ahead and click that and that should clear your stage and bring your sprite back to the center. Where do we find the reset script? Okay, so we haven't given it a name yet. Um, so your res your reset would be where's my X Y, and then the um, let's see, go to X Y. What was the other thing I had to do? Direction ninety. What uh, was it? Point, 
Point and direction 90. Oh, yeah, yeah, point and direction. Thank you. I do this with my class too. Okay, so you have this and then code. Clear. Oh, clear. Yep, that's good. Thank you. All right. See that great navigation? All right. So we have the pin down. <clears throat> and then when I click that, when I click this, it will take me to clear. Mm hmm Yep. We are starting at the very beginning. Okay. And so anytime I do my pin down now, we're good. I'm just clicking this whole bunch. I want to clear it. It's going to go back to the clear screen. We haven't named it. We haven't given it that um, a name yet. But we can name these things. Okay. All right. So this would be our reset script. That's our reset algorithm. And this is our draw something algorithm. All right, so if we don't have to be want to have to click on our blocks over and over and over again um, to get the code to draw a square, we can do a couple of different things because we see a little bit of a pattern here. Every time we clicked it, it would move the 50 steps and it would turn, right? So let's go ahead and duplicate that code. To duplicate your code that you're working with, you can um, kind of pull your pin up, block out, and then if you go up to your moves, uh, the 50 steps, if you go up to this code right here, you can right click on it and click duplicate. And you want to be on not where the pin down is, but where the move is. Okay. Everybody find the duplicate. And how many times will we have to put the the codes together to duplicate it to get a square? Four times. Mm -hmm. Four times. Yep. So that's what we're going to do um, when you get into your snap. And I'm going to show you. And I want my pin down at the end. Okay, so th this part is the half a square, but just go ahead and get the whole thing. <laughs> We're going to get the whole thing. We're going to get it until it looks like that. Now for beginning coders, this is this is pretty simple, but there's a lot of stuff in here, right? And um, we can see patterns in here and we are looking at, you know, we're doing the 50, 90, 50, 90, 50, 90, 50, 90. So there's <clears throat> some things that we can do to make this a little easier. And we're gonna we're gonna move forward as we um, as we move along. Is everybody good? Should have a draw square. Save your code. Save your code. <laughs> okay. Now, with our uh, with our uh, draw square, um, we're going to add a repeat walk to this, and <clears throat> you can see we have the turn of four side one, side two, side three, and side four, and we've got that pattern. We've been talking about this. And your students will, will maybe be able to talk about this, not necessarily the same way you talk about it with them, but um, but they can they can be working together and noticing these patterns. All right, 
So now we're at draw square with a repeat block. And we are going to go into our control blocks, which is the orange block, and it's in the um, right hand uh, column of the palette. <clears throat> And we're going to pull that repeat and that repeat block out. And the repeat block, I think, comes with 10. Does it come with 10? Might come with 10. Let's take a look. Repeat. Yeah, it comes with the 10, right? So that's the block you're looking for. You're looking for your repeat block. Right? Now we're gonna add that repeat block to the script area and we're gonna change it so that it's four. So we want the, to, the repeat to say four. And then we are going to put the move 50 steps and the turn 90 degrees inside that repeat four block. <clears throat> You're still going to need your pin up and your pin down, but you don't need that when you're inside the block. So those will go outside of the repeat block. If it's inside the repeat block, will it stop working? It still works with the pin up, pin down, inside. Mm -hmm. Right. So it still works. And that's another thing your students are going to be doing with you is that they're going to have different code that, that happens, right? And that's okay. So that doesn't break the code. It doesn't hurt the code. Um, we're not worried about that. Um, but a pin up and a pin down outside of the block is just fine as well. All right. So now that we have that, it says we can throw some blocks away. It's up to you if you want to throw your blocks away, but you can take all of those other blocks and you can uh, click on them, drag them over to the, um, the palette area and drop it and they will delete. You can also right click delete. Right click is your friend in Snap. Control C also works. So your hotkeys will work too, most of the time. So um, we should have um, pin down, repeat four, move 50 steps, turn 90 degrees, and then pin up, or repeat four with the pin up, pin down inside the block. That does not harm anything at all being in there. Save your code. <laughs> all right. So now we're getting into uh, needing to make a block. So we're going to make that abstraction. Well, for those of, you, those of you who teach APCSP already, we are making that um, procedure. This is the procedure. Uh, it's a block, it's an abstraction, uh, it's a function, it's a method, it's a procedure. These are all of the different names. There's probably something else I haven't, I haven't named yet uh, or I, I missed, but the procedure, so we're gonna look at it as how the College Board would talk about it. The procedure is the block we're gonna create. And we're gonna create a, a custom block. And the way to do this is to go all the way down to the bottom. Now, it's there are two ways, actually. One, and I will show you this here. One is going to your, um, your tab. Your, the tab that you want, the palette that you want, and scrolling all the way to the bottom, and then you can click Make a Block. This gives you that color of the tab. The other way you can do it is right-click, Make a Block, and then you can choose the color of your tab. A lot of times I do my blocks in gray so that I know where my blocks are um, because they always, the gray ones and the variables always live at the bottom of variables. All right, we're going to go ahead and follow along with what we're doing, and we are going to do make a block in the blue. 
So if you go into the motion all the way to the bottom, click make a block. And we're going to make this draw square into a block. <laughs> Go ahead and do this right here along with you. I, I have a teacher question about yeah. the um, the college boards when they just changed it this last year and they had the kids creating that personal program reference. How are all of these blocks that you're creating, your procedures in other words, how are they showing up in the code? Because if you're just showing the screenshot of your um your main area you know where you've got all your blocks that you've drug in you're not showing necessarily the definition of your procedure so the um when you once you create a block you are uh -huh. able to right click and click edit and then you can either take a screen capture of it um when we get into the pd itself we will talk about um, the different ways to uh, set up the uh, program code and everything. It's really pretty quick with Snap okay. because you can go and export your summary and it'll give you That's all fine. of the code with everything. That's fine. Okay, cool. Okay, I figured there had to be a way. Yep, there's ways. <laughs> um, so we've got our draw, draw square and you want to make sure that you're here um, doing that. I'm going to go ahead and make my repeat here. I'll do my pin up and pin down. <clears throat> okay, and once I click apply for my block, where do you think my block lives? So it was in motion and it's going to be, it's going to stay in motion. And I, you see, I have draw square here. Yeah. At the bottom. And to see inside the code, you right click on it and you edit and you can get inside here to edit the code. Marty, is there a way to, increase or decrease the size of the blocks within the block editor? Uh, within the block editor. So you want to make it look bigger. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I probably don't have my block zoom, do I? I have met 1.48, not sure how that happened. So you can make your blocks bigger. It, um, let me go through that process. If you go to the gear, you can click here and you can zoom your blocks and you make your blocks larger. Um, so I'll put two here. We're working with small code, so that's fine. And it should be, you should be able to make your blocks bigger that way. Also, you have these little screen adjustments here and also for your stage. <clears throat> what that does <clears throat> is it makes the blocks in the scripting area smaller also. I I like to keep the blocks in the scripting area large because they're easier to see. But if you keep them at the same large size in the block editor, you can't get them all to be visible at the same time. You have to scroll up and down. Sometimes you do. Yeah. You can, um, on the bottom right of the block editor, there's um, some place where you can drag and just make the block editor bigger. Does that help, uh, Mike? On the bottom right, you can drag that corner. Oh, I see. Okay, yes. Thank you very much, Tracy. That's good. All right. 
Look at that pair programming at work. <clears throat> okay, so we should have a draw square um, and you should have that code in it. And it should now be something that you can click on and draw your square. And you can just drag the code that you have written outside of your block into the block editor. Oh, I see what you were talking about. You were talking about the, um, I, I, let me go ahead. I see what you were talking about this part, which makes the, uh, the block editor grow and shrink as you need it. Right. Okay. Thank you for catching that. Whoever caught that. All right. So now we have our, uh, we have our parameter, our abstraction, our block. Um, and we have a draw square block, and this is what it does. And this right here is one of the main pieces that your students will have to do um, for the AP CSP exam. They will have to make an abstraction. Um, and this one doesn't have an um, explicit parameter, but we can add an explicit, easily add an, an explicit parameter to this. I'm saying these words. I know some of you aren't familiar with that yet. That's okay. Just listen to the words and I promise you, you will, you will get that understanding. Okay. Save your code. You have completed activity one. Now we're going to do an XML export and then we're going to take a quick break and, um, uh, like a little two or three minute break. And then we'll come back and do activity two, which is pretty quick. And then we'll have a little bit of a longer break and then we'll come back into section two. They're cleaning my windows. Gotta love it. Um, so we've got uh, to export and download your project to your computer. You're gonna click your file menu, which is uh, right next to your cloud and you're gonna click export project. And what this is gonna do is it's going to save your file, your project as an XML. This XML is something that cannot be changed, right? So um, if you're working with your students and you have a hard deadline on them and you want them to send you this exported project and you don't want it to be changed later because the share project will be, is changeable, um, this is the what, what you're going to choose. And let me go ahead and show you what it does. I'm gonna do a file tab, export project. Export summary will give you an image of all of your code. Export project actually exports it into an XML file. The way that you would access that XML file is you can open Snap. Okay, and you can take your XML file and you can drop the XML file into the scripting area and it opens the project. Okay, so now we've learned two ways to share. One was through the uh, sharing the URL and the other is your XML file. Some schools don't let students download things and don't let them, you know, download XMLs so then they can share. They can do a share and that's through the browser. Okay. So let's uh, take just a quick little break here. Does anybody, um, does anybody need to run and get some tea or anything? A drink? Yes. Did you want to take a um, a five minute stretch break, then, Marnie? And um... yeah, I'm looking at the time. We're at ten oh six. So let's go ahead and do five minutes. Okay. So if we if we can come back at ten eleven, um, that gives everyone at least a chance to go and stretch and. Uh,